a man wearing black walked out of her. You know, I can tell you several testimonies. One time, my elder sister, my elder sister was very sick. I traveled and I went to where the house I was told she was in the hospital. We got to the hospital. When we look at her condition, we had to take her to labor to where I stay. And, you know, they said if you had stayed for another four days, you would have died. She was almost dead. Now listen to this. So, we took her to another hospital. They began to treat her. All kinds of things were happening to her. And the recovery was not smooth. It was as if she was going to die. So one afternoon I took my prayer team. We went to the hospital. And I lay hands on her and began to pray. We began to pray. We began to pray. We prayed and prayed and prayed. Then in the midst of the prayer, she held my shirt and opened her eyes. This is someone that wouldn't open her eyes before. Open her eyes and scream. Then she revived. Then we give thanks to God. So I asked her, I said, what happened to you? She took her left hand out. She said, the mark is not there again. I said, what mark? She said, since she was little, there was a mark on her palm. Not a physical mark. Mm -hmm. And that there was a man that always followed her mm -hmm. everywhere she goes. Mm -hmm. She was a teacher. She said when she's teaching in the classroom, the man will stand behind her. Mm -hmm. She will see him. Mm -hmm. Hey! Hey! And that the man recognizes her by the mark. Okay. That there is no way she goes. The man will always recognize her. Because of the mark. Mm -hmm. She said, while you are praying, mm -hmm. the mark vanished. Amen. Amen. She said, and I saw the man. Mm -hmm. The man came behind you. She said, that was why she was holding my shirt. She wanted to say something to me, that the man is behind you. That the man became very angry. And the man said, you, 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 you release her. You release her. You release her. You, you release her. You release her. That the man was furious. He was pointing at me. That she wanted to tell me, hey, look at the man behind you. Look at the man behind you. That the man kept saying, I cannot recognize her anymore. I can't follow her anymore. The man has disappeared. Oh, Then we got to know that there was a covenant for her to die at that particular age, and she knew. So that man that had been following her, it was time for the man to take her life. So that's why she just had all kinds of sicknesses. And they kept treating and treating and treating and nothing was happening. They were treating, they were treating. But the moment the mark disappeared and that connection was broken, she opened her eyes and within a short while, she recovered. And she's alighted today to the glory of God. 25 years after, she's still alive. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't accept the lies of the enemy. Don't accept the lies of the enemy. Don't accept the lies of the enemy. Amen. Yera makoto shima. So the servant said to him, Sir, if you do plan go see here, how come do we have the wheat, the, the weeds, the tears, the mans, the master said, an enemy has done this. Then 
they asked him. They said, should we go and approach them? Prophetess. So it means the servants have authority to approach yes. anything that the devil planted. Amen. I am the servant for the hour. No. Amen. To approach. Yeah. They said, should we go and approach them? Yes. Authorized. He didn't say, well, you see, you cannot approach this kind, you know, this type, you will be with it, it be like that forever. No, he said you will approach them, but no, now, wait a little bit, at the end of the world, that is where you will approach. But what we are looking at is that the servants have the authority to approach whatever the enemy has planted. Amen! Oh my God. But still laying foundation. Yes. And that is why whatever the enemy are planted in Kenya okay. will be your foot. Yes. Yes. And I am asked to do your foot. Hallelujah. Approaching. That sickness implanted in your journey, in your bloodline, yes. that is affecting everybody in that family. Yes. See, you don't. This one, you don't need to close your eyes. 
You don't need to say Satan. He had the word of God. No. The word says, Sir, should we go and uproot? And the master said, Yes, you can uproot. So you can uproot and you can uproot everything. Now, no sickness, no disease, no infirmity, no ancestral power must remain in your life today in the name of Jesus. Now, stop your voice with me. I want you to repeat this prayer and shout it loud, including children, everybody. Say it with me, right? So, everybody, let's pray this prayer. Say, Arrows of sickness. I believe you can say it louder. Say, Arrows of sickness. Arrows of diseases. Arrows of failure. Arrows of poverty. Arrows of untimeliness.
A lot of parts in the scriptures are figurative. They are poetic. God using something to explain what we don't know. So figuratively, when you talk about sleep in scriptures, okay. it talks about a state of spiritual stupor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A state when you are not spiritually alert. A state of spiritual slumber. So what empowers the enemy when there is spiritual slumber? What empowers the enemy when there is spiritual stupor? When spiritually you are not alert. So, what will the enemy always seek to do to a believer? He will always want to make you spiritually a lazy. He will want to always want you to be spiritually sleepy, spiritually in stupor, mm -hmm. spiritually oppressed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you won't be awake mm -hmm. to take your stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why Satan, for example, we don't want people to come to a meeting like this. Because he knows if you come here for this week, he knows you will, you will come alive. And he knows this is the week for his expiry. Yeah. He knows. He, he knows. knows that you will come alive. He knows that you will, you will be awakened. He knows. So he comes in with the strength, strength, funny, funny things. So people will fall sick, people will feel tired. People will have every reason not to come. Mm. Oh, that place, it doesn't have AC. Oh, they don't have nice equipment. Mm -hmm. Oh, that place. Oh, I have this appointment. Oh, I have that appointment. And even when God starts waking you up in the night to pray, then He will tell you, Oh, you worked so hard yesterday. You need to sleep, need to sleep in an hour more. Uh -huh. Just sleep one more hour. How many of you understand what I'm talking yeah. about? Yes. And that one more hour becomes five hours. five hours. And then you wake up, and then you kneel down beside your bed. And He said, Father, 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 Father. And then you are dreaming. And in your dream, you are praying. And you talk, you are still praying. Not knowing that you are already dreaming. Why? Satan is scared. He's when scared. a Christian wakes up. Wakes up. We are waking up. Oh, man. We are waking up. He's scared. Yes. We are waking up. Yeah. Mm. Mm. He's scared. He's scared. Yeah. And listen to me today. The giant in you. Yes. Is waking up That's why when the devil wants to afflict a person, the first thing he does is to make you spiritually sleep. Mm -hmm. You notice that you want to pray. Mm -hmm. You now become a struggle. Mm -hmm. He said you that used to pray before. Now you kneel down beside your bed, Father, 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 oh God, oh God. Lord, just have mercy. Lord, just have mercy. Lord, just have mercy. And you become even an enemy of prayer. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. No. Yes, you become an enemy of prayer. Mm. What, what is prayer? happening mm. in the body of Christ today? Mm -hmm. And I know it's happening clear. Yes. That people are no longer being given direction. Hmm. To secure their destiny in prayer by themselves. Mm. But they are directing people to prophets. Uh -huh. Telling people uh -huh. that you don't need to do the praying. Uh -huh. You don't need to be awake spiritually. Uh -huh. The prophet will prophesy uh -huh. and he will give you a word. Uh -huh. And your problems will be over. The uh -huh. devil no. no. is behind Essential. that message. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember going to a place in Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a big convention. And the prophet came and was calling people's name, called their phone number, called uh -huh. the village they come from. Mm -hmm. And instead of people to be praying God, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. visit me. Uh -huh. You know the prayer they were praying? Mm -hmm. Oh God, let the prophet mention my case. My let the prophet mention my case. Oh God, let the prophet mention my case. Let the prophet mention my case. And when the prophet calls somebody, they start clapping. Wow. Oracle of God. Prophesy. Prophesy. Oracle of God. And then he will prophesy. And then he will say, Am I lying? Have I seen you before? And say, Your village is so and so and so in Kisumu. He said, Is that true? He said, Yes, man of God. Yes, man of God. Uh -huh. Ah, mm -hmm. those things don't have expired. <laughs> Christians in a state of spiritual stupor. Mm -hmm. Slumber. Mm -hmm. Remember, I told you the first day here. That I can pray for you for healing. I can pray for you for the job. But when it comes to your destiny, nobody can do it. Yes, it's me. My destiny is. So people who say they don't want to come to Gilga because in Gilga they will be challenged to pray for themselves. They will be challenged to wake up from slumber. They will be challenged. No. They say, no, I don't have to do that. There is a prophet in Nairobi. There is a prophet in Mombasa. I just go to him. He tells me all oh, my problems. And then he prophesies for my life. Deception. No. Deception. Deception. Oh, yes. Deception. No, that's no, that no. why people's problems are there. Mm. And that's why. When they follow this prophet, and after a while they see nothing, they say there's a new prophet <laughs> who is just coming <laughs> from the school. Uh -huh. Then they fly down and rush down, and then when they're there and they don't see anything, they say, Wow, there is a new prophet now in Uganda. And then they take flight, ha, ha, ha. they go to Uganda, and when nothing happens, they say, Oh, there is a new prophet now in Dais and now in Tanzania. And then they rush there. Yeah. Follow us, your prophets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be sharing something with you maybe tonight or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find out from the word of God that your destiny is in your hands. Yeah. In my hands. It's in, in my hands. hands. It's not in the hands of anybody. No, no, no. It's in my hands. Yeah. My own hands. What happens to you, to your life? Is in your hands. Amen. Amen. And until you wake up mm -hmm. and take responsibility yes. for your life, my life, God will not do anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be quiet because He's not invited. Because man is a good. creature of responsibility. Of responsibility. Mm -hmm. man is a creature of responsibility. That's right. You are where you are. Yes. And you are 